This is Math 99. We're going to look at section 6.2, which is uh, graphs of exponential functions. And uh, we've already talked a little bit last time about them. So let's say I had some function. Let's just make it 2 to the x. So a couple things I know about this. I know when x is 0, this is a 2 to the 0 is 1. So I know it goes through the point 0, 1. Another thing I know about this is how it grows is by multiplication, and it grows by multiplying by 2. So each time I go over 1 in the x value, like if x is 0 here, x is 1 here, this y value gets doubled. So this 1 becomes a, a 2. And if I go over once again, this height of 2 now becomes a height of 4. And it keeps doing that in this direction. And then if it's doubling in this direction, it must be halving in this direction. So this would be a half at negative 1, a fourth at negative 2, and so on. So notice I have an asymptote here at y equals x. In other words, as, this, uh, as I move to the left, this line gets closer and closer to that, um, to that x-axis, but never actually touches it. Um, in other words, as I get really big negatively, this thing tends to that 0. That's, that's an asymptote. So there's a basic shape of this equation. Notice it goes through 0, 1, and I have this, uh, this 2's doubling. If this was a 3, for example, it's going to grow faster. It's going to triple instead of double. It'll still go through 0, 1, but it'll grow a little bit faster, and if I'm going to the left, uh, diminish a little bit faster. So I can control how steep it is by that value right there. And then let's do some other stuff to it as well. And I'm going to bring up Desmos just to, uh, so you don't have, so I have my function. Looks like this. There it is at one, doubling, doubling, and so on. And here's what I want you to notice. If I subtract three from this, notice I'm subtracting three outside of the function. Like the two to the X has given me all these Y values. And now if I subtract three from them all, Notice what it does is it moves the whole thing down three. Let me, let me throw my original function back up here so we can compare them. So there's my original function. When I subtract three outside, it just takes the whole shape and moves it down three. So that thing that was at one is at negative two. That thing that was at uh, two is now down at negative one. Now notice that's what happens if I add it outside the function. If I do something inside the function, that's going to deal with uh, the x values. Outside the functions, the y values. Inside the function is going to be the x values. And it's a little counterintuitive. Notice if, if I go whoops, up inside the function. Let me turn this one off. Now, it looks like it kind of compressed it, but it didn't. Think about it this way. This point that's here at 0, 1 has gotten moved to the right 3. So now that's at the point 3, 1. And this point right here that was at 1, 2, that's gotten moved over to 4, 2. What this has done is this has added. Uh, that feels a little different than what it feels like it should do. Um, it, minus 3 feels like it should move at left 3, but it doesn't. It makes everything happen uh, three clicks later. So it moves it to the right 3. And then one last thing I want to notice. Um, I could, I could flip this thing. I, instead of making it go up, I can make it go down. I can make it grow faster. Uh, not grow faster, but kind of stretch in the up and down. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to multiply by 3 out here. And notice what I've done when I multiplied this by 3. This thing that was at 0, 1 now is at 0, 3, right? Because I've multiplied all those, um, all those y values by 3 outside the function. And it still goes over 1 and doubles, now it's up to 6, right? This value that was at 2 is now up at 6. Still goes over and doubles. This value that was at 4 will now be tripled as well. It would be up there at 12. So I have a couple of things going on. I have uh, moving it left, right, moving it up, down, and stretching it. In short, I could think of it like this is an k. And so notice, as I make A bigger, oh, I want to graph it. As I make A bigger, stretches it that way. Uh, if I make A 
fractional, or negative, sorry, it goes down like this. So there's all that. Uh, H, I can move it left, right. See how that moves it left, right? Remember, H is up in here. And K, I can move it up down. Which values for me. And there's a really good summary for, um, for this that comes out of your book. General equation for all translations, that's it right there. Notice they put plus C, that'll move it opposite, um, right? I said minus C, so it matches, Never mind. Uh, but if it says plus C, that's gonna move it to the left, right? It's opposite of this. D moves it up, down, negative would flip it over, and this A value stretches it this way. Now we haven't done this one at all, reflect about the Y axis. Um, that's B to the negative value. And I'm going to bring back up Desmos. Turn all this off. So notice what that does is that reflects it this way. So if I put the negative in front, it affects the Y values. It reflects it this way. If I put the negative inside the function instead of outside the function, I, I'm messing with the X values before they get run through the function. It reflects it this way. So that's that. And what's interesting in that is a negative exponent is the same as division, right? Like I could write this as one half to the power of x, and it gives me the same, it gives me the same graph. Uh, two to the negative one is one half. So writing it this way is the same as saying a fraction, which makes sense because now if I go over one, it's being cut in half instead of double. So that being said, let's take a look at a couple of. Okay, write an equation for the function described. Give the horizontal asymptote domain and range. Uh, let's not worry about that. Let's just write the equation for it. F of x is e to the x. So e, remember, is just a number. That's just a base of about 2.7. So that means uh, it's still going to be this exponential growth, just going over 1, being multiplied by about 2.7 each time. Stretched by a factor of 2, so we've got this e to the x. Stretched by a factor of 2, that means it's multiplied by 2. Reflect it across the y-axis. y-axis is this one. So it's going this way. So that's going to be negated here. And then shift it up 4 units. Well, that's plus 4 out here. So there's an equation uh, that would do that. Stretched by a factor of 2. Reflect it across y shift it up four units. And what that does is notice that moves the asymptote up too. So the asymptote would be up, be like up here, and it should go like that. Let's peek at another one. Write an equation of this function. Um, let's just write an equation. E to the x, so there's our parent, compressed by vertically uh, by a factor of one third. Okay. So it's squished by a third, multiplied by a third, reflected across the x-axis. That's this one. So that's messing with the y values, so it happens outside the function. And then shift it down two units. Down two units. All right. So there's how we can, uh, we can get at those. Now, the nice thing about the graphs is I can use them to, to, solve, um, to solve equations. And I can use my graphing calculator for it which is kind of cool. Um, so I'm going to have some equation 42 equals 1 point. And I want to solve this. And right now, I don't have necessarily like all of the uh, algebra tools to solve this, but I can use my graphing calculator for it. And I can use Desmos too. I'll show that in a minute. The other screen. So here's my equation 42 equals this. Some nice set of directions here. This is out of your text, but I'm just going to show you what this says. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to graph two different lines, one that's y equals 42 and one that's y equals this curve, and we're going to see where they cross. Um, so I'm just going to enter my first thing, which is just y sub 1, my first line, is equal to 42. Okay, that's good. My second line is uh, 1.2 and uh, times 5 to the x plus 
So now notice what I have is two lines and my window might be off. I'm just gonna hit graph and see what happens and nothing shows up. Uh, oh, one thing shows up, but the other one doesn't. So maybe I'll do this, uh, I'll see if my zoom will work here. I'll do zoom fit. There's a command called zoom fit that sometimes shows you, just kind of makes the window what you want it to be. Yeah, that works. Well, maybe it works. <laughs> There's that. Let me look at my window settings. Window. So I noticed that my Y minimum is 2.8, but my Y maximum is huge. Like thousands, 11 million. I'm gonna, I'm gonna change that. Cause I only want needed to go up to 42. So how about I just make this like a 55? So, and I'll make my Y minimum zero just because that feels good. So what I've done, I've done is I've compressed that Y axis. And now if I have it graph it again, Okay, there's my Y equals 42. And here's my um, other part. So the top line, the flat line, Y equals 42, is just a flat line at 42. Y is always equal to 42, no matter what X is. This is when X is one, Y is a certain value. When X is two, Y is a certain value. These will be equal to each other when these two things intersect. So I've graphed them both. So let me do this part there. To find the value of x, we compute the point of intersection. Second calc intersect. So there's a, there's a command in here that finds the intersection of the two lines. So second calc, and notice that calc is here above the trace button. And then intersect is five. You can arrow to it or you can just hit five to select it. And then it says first curve. So I wanna check, I wanna know where y equals 42 intersects with the second curve, which is that. And it asked me for a guess, so I'm just going to arrow over kind of close to it. That's pretty close. Beep, bop, boop. Oh, it looks like it intersects when y is 42 at about 2.16. And I could easily check it by taking that value, plugging it back into my calculator, and I'll get something close to 42. So I can use my calculator uh, to solve these by using that, uh, that trace, for, I'm sorry, that intersect function in the calculator. It's a nice little. Uh, Nice little piece. All right. Uh, now you've got some ideas about these graphs. You know how all of these pieces move things around. Um, you'll be able to sketch them, write them from sketches, and uh, remember to message any questions that you have.